Today we are going to learn a very very interesting instrument which is known as a multimeter. Being an engineer, I have always neglected the use of a multimeter as it is ETO who is responsible for its operation. But being a competent engineer is the one you know who can do the troubleshooting with the resources available. And so considering this, I'm going to make a three episode series in which you will be able to learn the proper use of multimeter, all the functions and the options accurately. And by the end of the series, you will understand everything about the multimeter. So I have ordered one Fluke multimeter, one Fluke insulation tester online. I received it today. So let's open and learn something interesting about it. So we'll keep the insulation tester aside and let's take the screwdriver to demonstrate the parts and we'll keep the MacBook side. So if you see, this is the multimeter which we have used on board ships, every single ships. Single ships. This is the Fluke 117 True RMS multimeter. On the back side of the multimeter, you see there's one manual. There are two probes, set of probes which are packed inside. So let's understand what is a multimeter. A multimeter is a meter which we use in order to measure and simulate the loop characteristics such as voltage, current and resistance within these circuits. So this is how a fluke multimeter looks. There is a battery pack inside this. We will learn each and everything in a while. So let's open the box. There is one uh, manufacturer sticker here. This is the manual for the fluke multimeter. And here is a set of probes which we will learn and understand its use accurately in a while. So let's go and first understand what is a multimeter. So in order to do the calibration part, the testing part, the fault finding part on the electronic loops and currents and to understand exactly what is happening within these loops and be a competent marine engineer, it's very important to have a good knowledge on how does the multimeter works in order to measure current voltage resistance within these circuits. So you see in this episode, we are going to learn the physical aspects of the multimeter. And in the next episode, we are going to learn about the selector switch options, which we have. And in the third episode, we are going to learn the actual and the practical use of the multimeter. So let's learn the physical components of the multimeter. This yellow part is the protective layer, protective casing, which is given by the fluke across the multimeter. If you wish, you can just take it out like a mobile case also. So you can see it can come out also. But for the safety purpose, I'm going to keep it within. So this, the first part we are going to see is the screen. The digital screen on your fluke multimeter. So this screen will show us the units, the scale and the other visual information about our measurements. Whatever we are going to measure is going to come on this part of the meter, which is called as a screen. So this is the protective casing below the screen. We have several buttons which give you different functionalities. So some buttons have varying functions like this. You can see the white color, the yellow color. So they have varying functionality depending on the mode you are going to select. So let's start with the first option, which is hold. So this button is used during the measurement readings to freeze the display. It is mainly useful where we have varying readings, wherever you have multiple readings or your values are going to vary. There we use this button. So or if you are working alone, if you wish to record the values on sheets, for example, last time we used it on IG calibration. So that time we were taking readings, I was alone. So I had to use this to freeze the screen and to write the readings on the sheet. So the next button we have is a minimum slash maximum button. So you see the minimum, the maximum button allows us to enter a mode that will record the highest, the lowest and the average readings 
we have recorded since we have entered the mode and the mode I'm talking about are these. So this will help you to record the minimum, the maximum and the average reading values, whichever mode we have selected. So the third option comes is the range or some meters you must have seen it is written as low or high. If you see clearly, it is also written slightly low slash high. So this means that whenever you are taking a reading, it is the range between the buttons will allow us to enter either a auto ranging or you will have a manual ranging mode. So generally auto ranging is the best and will select the unit value, which is the most appropriate as per the mode you have selected. Now it is mainly used, you know, during the resistance reading where you could be reading anything from ohms to kilo ohms to mega ohms. So this part we mostly use when we are valuing the resistance part. So the more you must have seen the yellow button, which is simulating this yellow options, which are given in some of the modes like this, 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 and this. So this is used to give you an alternate function, which if you look at the selected dial you will see certain symbols in a yellow color for example this 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 the yellow button will allow us to utilize these functions while we are in that mode it will show us on the screen whatever mode we have selected plus additionally the second options which is in yellow color and the fourth button which you have is the lamp button this lamp button is mostly used when we have a very dim light or a very bad lighting or we are working in the cabinet whereas there is insufficient lighting so it will give us a backlight to the display perfect for working in the cabinets that may have a poor lighting that is the only purpose of the lamp button